Good morning. We will give just a moment to clear the waiting room. Good morning. This is the voting hearing for the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Thursday, October 31st, 2024. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. While the public is encouraged to attend, there will be no additional testimony uh, taken this morning. Beginning with the license premise inspection hearing, which occurred on Tuesday, October 29th, 2024. Item number one, 253 Food and Spirit LLC, doing business as Nashville Grill and Stage, located at 255 to 257 Tremont Street. Date of the incident, May 27th, 2024. Overserving alcohol in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and over intoxicated patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Uh, we're still waiting on the narrative to go along with the 70 video clips, so my vote is to defer. Yeah. Yes. Deferred. And number two, Las Palmas Market Inc. doing business as El Parma Restaurant, located at 290 Bennington Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, June 23rd, 2024. Patron on patron assault in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Um, I see no violation. Um, I was more concerned with why the door was locked and their explanation was reasonable, so I don't see any violation. Um, I was concerned about not calling the police. I, I wasn't 100% certain that they were aware, but I was concerned. I, I thought maybe some correspondence just reminding them because. I think to me, sometimes that's a bigger issue is, you know, it's not like crime, it's a cover up. So I just want to maybe a, a short correspondence of reminding them about their duty to call the police. I agree with that. Okay. So no violation, correspondence from the board uh, regarding their duty to call the police. Item number three, Identity Foods LLC doing business as Pollo Centro located at 225A Bowden Street in Dorchester. Date of the incident, June 20th, 2024. Assault and battery employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. I didn't think this um, assault and battery was foreseeable. The employee was fired, and the owner actually thought it was just a verbal dispute. So I think that's a reasonable explanation as to why he didn't preserve the video evidence by seeing a violation. Yeah, I agree across the board. <laughs> I agree. Item number four, at uh, the request of the licensee, will be continued to the next available hearing date. Item number five, GSI Shamit LLC, doing business as Kava, located at 315 Shamit Ave in Roxbury. Date of the incident, July 25th, 2024. Persons under 21 in possession of alcohol on premise in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34A, 34C, and 6464A. I see a violation. Yes. I agree. And I, they don't have any history of this, so my vote is for a first warning. I agree. Yes. Violation with a warning. Uh, moving on to the second license premise inspection hearing held on Tuesday, October 29th, 2024. Uh, item number one, Massachusetts Sports Service, Inc. doing business as TD Garden, located at 100 Legends Way. Date of the incident, April 4th, uh, April 10th, 2024, removal of two underage intoxicated patrons in violation of Math General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and removal of 10 intoxicated patrons causing a nuisance in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Um, for this one and the other TD Garden ones, um, I vote is to defer. We're waiting on supplemental materials from their, their side and their attorney, which they need more time to prepare for us. So my vote would be to defer all of them. Okay. 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 All uh, seven items will be deferred until uh, we receive the requested supplemental materials from the licensee. Yeah. Moving on to the transactional hearing, which occurred yesterday, Wednesday, October 30th, 2024. Item number one, Berkeley College of Music, Inc. Doing business as Mellow, located at 699 Boylston Street, has applied for a common victualler license, manager Sean Sturgis. Hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, I have no issue. Go to approve. I agree. I agree. Item number two, Blank Street Coffee, 120 Causeway Street, Boston, LLC, located at 120 Causeway Street in Boston, has applied for a common victualler license. Manager Derek Craig, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I have no issue. I vote to approve. 
I agree. I agree. Item number three, Papa ERDR Dorchester LLC, doing business as Papa John's, located at 1501 Dorchester Ave in Dorchester, has applied for a common victualler license. Manager was corrected on the record to Charles Tab. Hours of operation, 10 a.m. And closing time was also corrected on the record to uh, 12 midnight, Sunday through Thursday, and 1 a.m. Friday and Saturday. So this one was not... Um straightforward for me as the previous two. Um, this is a CD that doesn't even require a hearing, um, but because there was such opposition, the board um, determined that a hearing should be held. Um, there was a lot of testimony about competition, um, which were, isn't even a consideration for us with these CDs. And to dig a little deeper, we've had similar fast food chains try to go into other neighbors um, neighborhoods and um, the the opposition really wasn't focused on the fast food opposition of this really wasn't focused enough for me. Um, I also take issue with some of the testimony at the hearing um, where they took into question um, other uh, licensees in the neighborhood and I, I thought that was honestly out of line by the applicant, but I'm putting that aside. Taking a look at the application, um, this is one fast food place replacing replacing another fast food place that was previously there. The um, applicant um, agreed to compromise um, on the hours. Um, they submitted last night a sufficient written plan as far as third party pickup and also their own delivery pickup. Um, should this be approved, all deliveries would have to be through the back entrance that the landlord owns that would be down Faulkner Street, and that would be a condition on their license that they would be held to. Um, and um, my question on the hearing yesterday was, you know, why they wanted to come into this neighborhood when there was four other existing pizza places, and I really don't know what the answer is to that. They did come back to us last night with a, um, in writing agreeing to add healthy options to their menu, um, salads and other th other um, healthier options. Um, so I wasn't able to find a reason this was not in the public good, except for the fact that there was a group of people um, who opposed it, and a lot of that opposition seemed to be um, along the lines of competition. There was opposite. There was some testimony about wanting a healthier option, but I don't think this neighborhood has been able to um, to make the argument bigger than you know on a, on this one case basis. I haven't seen a lot of other movement towards healthier options with um, applications that have come in here. Those are my thoughts. Um, so at this point, my vote would be to approve the CD license with the conditions we just described. Um. Yeah, clearly that this application and this process, this hearing, would bring back to mind uh, our the, the dispute of our Popeyes on Washington Street, also in Dorchester. Um, I felt like some of the arguments that were made were are clearly compelling uh, about healthy options and and saturation, uh, having the same types of uh, food available right there. Um, the thing I the the distinction I can make from Popeyes is. In Popeyes, it was very clear that there was a groundswell of um, very credible community leaders behind it. Um, and so therefore, th those people raising those arguments made those arguments much more compelling. Um, I don't know if I felt like that was the case here. Um, also with Popeyes, issues with traffic weren't addressed and really weren't as far as deliveries weren't brought up because it wasn't the same time or same type of business as far as deliveries. I know that was part of the basis of us still saying no to Popeyes. Um, those are my thoughts, uh, meaning I'm open to the arguments that uh, a small little neighborhood could be overwhelmed with you know bad food options. And for me, Papa John's, I would say is an unhealthy food option, right? Maybe they're gonna add some salads. I don't think that's gonna be a majority of the business, 
they said they don't offer fried foods. I think that they have fried foods. They just fried somewhere else and they reheat them. <clears throat> so that's where I'm at on my thought process. Um, I'd like to hear what Commissioner Saxon has to say. As you guys know, I am very sensitive about healthy options uh, in neighborhoods. Um, I think I think overall, I don't feel like this is uh, this was as serious as maybe the uh, Burger King that I voted against. Um, I think there's uh, I think there's at least some options on the menu that allow it to uh, not be as deleterious as some other fast food places. Um, I also feel like most of the opposition was not actually about the menu, but it was about uh, competition. And um, I don't, I didn't feel it to be very compelling. I actually, I actually was a little bit annoyed by it. Um, I feel like they, they seem to be good operators um, from what they have testified about um, their willingness to work with employees and, and how they treat their employees and you know, hiring locally. Um, so I think they'll be a good operator. So I really don't, I couldn't find a way to disallow or to vote against um, this particular application. I did want to say, I think the chair's idea of putting the uh, all deliveries from the back as a condition on the license is very good. Yeah, I agree. So Chairman Joyce, the, I, the vote was an, uh, an, an approval. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon, is that across the board? I think so, yeah. My approval is conditioned upon that condition being on the face of the license about deliveries, all deliveries. Great. So condition that all deliveries must be made through the rear driveway accessed off Bachner Street. Yeah. And so, I think we should encourage them to continue to work with the community, uh, continue to have meetings, to continue to, to be in good relationship um, so that it's a, it's a strong operator. And that, that helps the whole main street area hmm. and just so anyone from Papa John's is listening that means should they be found to be allowing people to double park and go in and pick up their order um, that would be considered a violation and their license could be suspended for that this is something we're taking very seriously in every neighborhood in the city okay. so does this mean deliveries and pickups will have to take place through that back deliveries and pickups okay. deliveries and pickups so they said they were there was a, le a letter that they were going to send. Did they send that letter? I wasn't. We did get that last night. Um, in an was an agreement between the landlord and. It was just short of a of an agreement from the landlord, but we're going to go back and ask the landlord to sign off on it. Okay, and approved with the um, the revised hours, correct? Yes. Thank you. Item number four. Hersha Concession Associates LLC doing business as the Envoy Hotel located at 70 Sleeper Street uh, has petitioned to change the manager to Joshua Glover. I vote to approve uh, Mr. Glover as manager of record. I believe he is the appropriate character in fitness. I agree. I agree. Item number five, Huntington Theater Company Inc. doing business as the Calderwood Pavilion at the BCA located at 527 Tremont Street has petitioned for a change of officer directors. I vote to approve the change. I agree. Great. Item number six, Trinity Ashmont Restaurant LLC doing business as Tavolo, located at 1918 Dorchester Abbey in Dorchester, has petitioned to change the manager to Tara O'Reardon and has petitioned for a change of LLC managers. I vote to approve Ms. O'Reardon as manager of record. I believe she's the appropriate character and fitness to serve, and I also vote to approve the change of managers. I agree. I agree. Item 7, Galway House, Inc., doing business as the Galway House, located at 710A to 712 Center Street in Jamaica Plain. This petition to change the manager to Albi Jura, petition for a change of officers' directors, petition for a change of stock interest, and has petitioned to pledge the license and inventory to Rockland Trust Company. I vote to approve um, Mr. Jura as manager of record. I believe he's the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I also vote to approve the other changes that are requested. I do as well. I agree. 
Items eight through 11, RBSBW Inc. doing business as Roach Brothers Supermarket at 8 Summer Street and at 1800 Center Street in West Roxbury. This petition to change the corporate structure of the licensed business and a change of ownership interest and a change of stock interest in items eight and 10. And a petition for a change of ownership interest and a change of stock interest in items nine and 11. I vote to approve. I agree. Okay. Item number 12 will be rescheduled to the next available hearing date due to uh, lack of a butter notifications. Item 13, W Entertainment Group, Inc., doing business as Limelight, located at 204 Tremont Street, has petitioned to amend the description of the premise to ground floor, including restaurant, approximately 11,704 square feet total, with performance area, stage, and tables with approximately 30 seats, lounge with seating for approximately seven patrons, and bar with 11 seats, 23 individual karaoke rooms, together with kitchen, service, bar, storage, office space, and restrooms. The building has entrances and exits at the front, rear, and side and has also petitioned to change the DBA to Viva Karaoke and Studios. I vote to approve the amendment. I do as well. I agree. Item 14, Coppersmith Hall LLC, located at 40 West 3rd Street in South Boston, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location to ARE 15 NECO TRS Holding LLC, located at 15 NECO Street, uh, 1 a.m. indoor and outdoor closing hour, Michael Shea Sims, manager. I vote to approve Mr. Sims as manager of record. I believe he's the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I also vote to approve the transfer. However, there, I want to put a condition on this transfer that any subsequent management agreement or transfer at the same location has to come back to us for approval and back to the community. Yeah, as agreed. Right? Yes. As agreed. Makes sense. Granted, with the condition that any subsequent management agreement or transfer at the same location must be accompanied by community process and approved by the board. Item 15, Fajitas and Rita's Inc. doing business as Fajitas and Rita's located at 25 West Street has petitioned to transfer the license and the location to Parsons CC Selfie Opco LLC doing business as Common Craft located at 85 Damrell Street. Uh, Lawrence Lebowitz, manager, 1 a.m. closing hour has also petitioned to pledge the license to Washington Village Phase 1 Property Owner, LLC. I vote to approve the transfer. I vote to approve the pledge and Mr. Leibowitz as manager of record. I believe he is the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I agree. <laughs> on the board. I agree. Item 16, Meniagiro Seaport, Inc., doing business as Meniagiro, located at 50 Northern Ave, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location to Sarva Foods LLC, doing business as Sarva Cafe, located at 279 Newbury Street. Bonus Toparatu Manager, 10 a.m., uh, sorry, 12 a.m. closing hour indoors, 10 p.m. outdoors. There's also a petition to change the classification of the license to a wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license. And has a petition to remove conditions from the license, stating alcoholic beverages to be served only in conjunction with meals and no bar. I vote to approve the transfer. I vote to approve the manager of record. I believe he is the appropriate character and fitness to serve. I also vote to approve the change in classification and to remove the condition, the two conditions on the license. I agree. I agree. Item 17, Mr. G's Corner LLC doing business as Maddie's Provisions and Spirits located at 2193 Commonwealth Ave in Brighton has applied for a retail package store all alcoholic beverages license. Manager Amir Khan Chowdhury, closing time, 10 p.m. I lost my place, Danny. This is number 16? 17. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so I believe the applicant outlined pretty clearly the elements of public need and they were met. I see this more as a gourmet grocery store that has an amenity of kosher wines and spirits and other offerings. Um, the opposition was very strong and um, they made their, um, they made themselves, uh, they made their opposition very clear. Um, I also commend the applicant for working with the people that are opposed to them and agreeing to certain conditions on the license. Um, often when we look at these package store applications, in my eyes, I want to see how close uh, a similarly situated um, 
uh, license premise would be. And this is different than the ones that are even a mile away from this location. This is, um, it seems like an upscale uh, gourmet cheese store. Um, and the ones that we, print, we were able to locate all the other um, package store licenses in the general area, none of them are, none of them are similar. Um, so I, I also want to make a comment. So I, I do find um, public need has been met. Um, I do believe Mr. Chaudhuri has the appropriate character to bring fitness to serve as manager of record. Um, they've also received approval from the city's planning department. They've received approval from the ZBA. They've agreed and they've agreed to no nips, no singles, no kegs, um, no lottery, no tobacco, no delivery. They've agreed to keep their floor plan on file, which outlines the part of the store that would be for groceries and the part of the store that will be for alcohol. And they need to come back to this board if they make any changes to that. So for all of those reasons, my vote would be to approve this application. Um, I don't think there'll be any detrimental impact to the church. They've agreed not to open before 11 a.m. on Sundays. Um, I don't think that will interfere with mass at all. Um, my only additional request, request would be that they send us correspondence with an inventory list prior to opening. They are trying to work out their business plan as far as um, what they are selling, as far as beer, whether they're selling six packs or, or bigger, and we'd like to have that on file. So um, my vote is to approve. Yeah, I was sympathetic to the opposition, but in order to be consistent in the way we evaluate these if we compare them to other neighborhoods, um, the distance, the, the distances we're talking about are actually much greater than what we usually talk about uh, as far as like what package stores are close by. Um, there really isn't a lot in the radius that we usually are talking about, like five minute walks. Not We're not usually talking about miles away. Um, so that, you know, as far as public need, there isn't a lot in the area. They did say that they were going to offer specialty offerings. That you can't ignore the, the idea that they're going to offer kosher offerings, which are, as far as I can tell by Google, and no one else gave me any other information, I don't think those things are um, available very close by. Um, yeah, I just, you know, and, and as far as um, the one idea, I didn't really know what to do with, which is the idea that this this proprietor could do everything right and 21-year-olds could pass off it on a different location to 20-year-olds. I don't know if we can hang that on them potentially. I don't know if anyone can, you know, give me other thoughts, but that's something I thought about. I, it, it seems compelling, but like, you know, that could be true of any licensee. Uh, I don't know how we say someone can't have a license because in a remote location that might happen. So th that's where I was at on this application. I think it's uh, unique enough um, and compelling enough of, a, of an application to approve. Did they submit in writing um, how they are going to check their process of checking for underage, like what scanner they're going to use, questions they're going to ask, the backup they're going to ask for? I mean, I, I heard the testimony, but maybe they can just submit it in writing. Sure. We can ask for an operations plan as far as um, checking for underage. Is that a, so is that, that's an approval? Yes, that's board. an approval, yes. All right. And just to make sure I have the list of conditions from Chairman Joyce, that was no kegs, no nips, no singles, no lottery, no tobacco, no deliveries. Um, you had mentioned they're not opening uh, until 11 a.m. on Sunday. Do you want that listed as a condition on the face yes. of the list as well? Yep. Great. And the board is requesting a, a written inventory list prior to opening and a uh, written plan for how they are going to identify uh, patrons. And the floor plan has to be on? Yes. Floor plan must be on site at all times and any changes to the floor plan or the amount of alcohol sold must come back to the board for approval. And the floor plan is available for inspection. Yes, floor plan is available on site for inspection at all times. And to in and continue to encourage them to work with PC, to work with the college community. 
And Danny, for the record, um, I find that there was no specific evidence um, saying that this will interfere with the operation of the train. So. Thank you. Yes. That's the, poorly. The chair only mentioned that as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Items, uh, item number 18, DTDA Enterprises, Inc., doing business as Dante Canio Edonia Arepa, located at 403 Center Street in Jamaica Plain. Is applied for a common victualler, seven day wines and malt beverages license. Manager Joel Marte, closing time 11 p.m. Oh, we're deferring all of these, right? Uh, these are, oh, yeah, the remainder are all new license applications. Yes, my vote is to defer the all new, all of the remaining new license applications until after December 6th. The remainder will be deferred until after all applications come in by December 6th. Moving on to non-hearing transactions, the following are applying for a new common victualler license at a previously licensed location. Item one, Dudley Food, Inc., doing business as Royal Fried Chicken, located at 2360 Washington Street in Roxbury. Manager Anwar Shah, hours of operation, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Yes. Item number two, Starfish Eggleston LLC, doing business as Starfish Market, located at 3089 Washington Street in Roxbury. Manager Yonatan Pena, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Yes. Item number three, Prieto's Empanadas Corp, doing business as Maxi's, Max's Deli Cafe, located at 202 Humboldt Ave in Dorchester. Manager Max Ray Almengor, hours of operation, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item four, Little Max Inc. doing business as Max's Deli Cafe, located at 150 Milk Street. Manager Jake Queen, hours of operation 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Item five, MVR Restaurant Group LLC doing business as Proof Pizzeria, located at 1312 Commonwealth Ave in Alston. Manager Maya Inc. Rao, hours of operation 11 a.m. to 3 a.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Following have applied to make changes to their existing common victualler licenses. Item number one, the Berry Twist Inc. doing business as the Berry Twist, located at 200 Faneuil Hall Marketplace. Has petitioned to change the officer director LLC manager to Andrea Goncalves. I vote to approve. I agree. Item two, 1107.av LLC doing business as Lucky Cafe Restaurant, located at 1107 Dorchester Ave in Dorchester. Has petitioned to change the officer director LLC manager to Robert Ang and Wu Hua Wu, and has petitioned to change the ownership interest to Robert Ang 60% and Wu Hua Wu 40%. I vote to approve. I agree. Item three, JP Licks at West Broadway, Inc., doing business as JP Licks, located at 397B West Broadway in South Boston, has petitioned to update the capacity to 44 seats based on updated ISD certificates. I vote to approve. I agree. Item four, GF Enterprise LLC, doing business as Taco Bell, located at 76 Summer Street, has petitioned to change the manager to Hugo Cardenas. I vote to approve. I do as well. Great. Item five, Water Street Deli LLC, located at 82 Water Street, has petitioned to change the manager to Israel Bernardo. I vote to approve. I agree. Item six, Shake Shack, Massachusetts, LLC, doing business as Shake Shack, number 1431, located at 800 Boylston Street, has petitioned to change the officer, director, LLC manager to Robert Lynch as CEO. I vote to approve. I agree. Items seven through 10 all concern uh, the same ownership interest change. This is Boston Pie, Inc., doing business as Domino's Pizza at 506 to 512A Park Drive at 414 to 416 Cambridge Street in Alston, 1400 Tremont Street in Mission Hill, and 64 Staniford Street have all petitioned to change the ownership interest to David Jenks at 51% and Dominic Benav uh, Benvenuti, 49%. I vote to approve. I agree as well. I agree. And additionally, at the Alston location, uh, there is a petition to change the manager to Evru Akus. I vote to approve. I agree. Item nine, uh, at the Mission Hill location, petition to change the manager to Anselmo Vidal-Lazardo. 
You want to approve? I agree. And item 10 at the Stanford Street location, petition to change the manager to Rumesa Kararasan. I vote to approve. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Item number 11, Peng Shao Xian Restaurant, LLC, doing business as Boston Soup Dumplings, located at 113 Brighton Ave in Alston, has petitioned to change the ownership interest to Xiao Hang Peng 100%. This is a buyout of the 50% partner. Has petitioned to change the corporate name to PXX Innovation, LLC. And has petitioned to change the opening hour to 10.30 a.m., one hour earlier. I vote to approve. I agree. Item 12, West Garden, Inc., doing business as West Garden, located at 1890 Center Street in West Roxbury. It's petitioned to change the manager to Jan Hong Huang. It's petitioned to change the ownership interest to Jan Hong Huang 100%. This is also a 50% buyout. I vote to approve. I agree. Item 13, Steward, uh, Steward St. Elizabeth's Medical Center, doing business as St. Elizabeth's Medical Center at 736 Cambridge Street in Brighton, has petitioned to change the manager to Ryan Lenhart. I vote to approve. I agree. Following have applied for a one day amendments to their existing license. Uh, the licensee in both cases is AHF Speedway Holdings, LLC doing business as Charles River Speedway, located at 1420 to 1440 Soldiers Field Road in Brighton. Item number one is an application for a one-day amendment uh, to extend their hour to 10 p.m. on November 7th for a fall season gathering. I vote to approve. I agree. And item number two, uh, same licensee, is an application to extend their license into the annex for a wedding tea ceremony on November 10th from 12 to 6 p.m. I vote to approve. I agree. Great. The board has before them a list of applications for special one-day alcoholic beverages licenses, which have been administratively reviewed by staff and approved by the board. And on old and new business, uh, first item for acknowledgement, the board received a written plan on de-escalation and staff training from Witchcraft LLC, doing business as New England Wicked Craft Company at 54 Salem Street, uh, which had been requested by the board on August 22nd. Um, just acknowledge it that we've received it. Yes. Great. Acknowledge it will be docketed and placed on file. Item number two, the board had deferred disposition of this violation uh, to allow the licensee to submit a requested security operations and dispersal plan. Restaurant de Cesaria, Inc., located at 266 Bowdoin Street in Dorchester. The date of the incident was June 28th, 2024, a large fight, a fray involving patrons outside the premise in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. They did submit a dispersal plan, which we have on file, and we now have that to hold them accountable. Um, given the violation that we were discussing previously and the testimony that there had been a lot of police response, at that location in the um, weeks and months leading up to this, I, I saw this as foreseeable and I do see a violation. Yeah, I, I thought it was maybe a little bit of willful ignorance. I think the testimony was that they were inside cleaning, but you know, I think the expectation is that they would have, like their dispersal plan said, they would be outside making efforts to disperse. So that's how I, I agree. Um. Yeah, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I agree. Uh, and my vote would be for a written warning because they don't have any uh, history here of this. Yes. yes. Violation with a warning and the um, dispersal plan will be uh, docketed and kept on file. Mm -hmm. Item number three, the board had deferred disposition of this violation as well to allow for submission of video evidence, Boston Leco Corp located at 71 to 79 Warrington Street. Date of the incident was August 25th, 2024. Assault and battery, employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, Chapter 265, Section 13A, and assault and battery patron on employee in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Uh, we didn't see what led up to, we didn't see much of what led up to the actual assault um, on the video. We did see the patron punching the uh, security guard first, I'm sorry, lunging at the security guard first. And it appeared that the security guard's response was self-defense. 
Uh, so I don't see a violation here. Um, it appears that way. Uh, I think on one of the videos, I saw something that might have been the precursor. It's it's hard to tell. Um, I I was concerned because of a couple things. That if I was seeing that person urinating outside, it was clear that he was quite intoxicated. Probably why he was outside urinating outside on a car. Um, so that potentially could have been contributory to this. And um, just my sense of the self-defense was that it might not have been proportional. I don't know, I, I, maybe it was, maybe he was that scared of this guy lunging at him, but maybe it wasn't. So I would like to see correspondence at least on proportionality to, to the threat. I don't think we had enough to find a violation, but it's not that I wasn't concerned. I think that's a good idea. I agree. Okay. No violation of correspondence on uh, the use of force and proportionality. And Danny, can we docket the fact that we asked for this correspondence so that we can refer to it should there be future incidents? Absolutely. We'll be docketed. Those are all of the items before the board today. Thank you all and uh, please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.